Mass propaganda is the very reason why in this so-called age of information, we are more confused and divided from each other than ever. Now, it had been commonly thought in the past, and not without basis, that tyranny could only exist on the condition that the people were kept illiterate and ignorant of their oppression. To recognize that one was oppressed meant that they must first have an idea of what was freedom. And if one were allowed the privilege to learn how to read, his discovery was inevitable. So it's recognized, albeit superficially, that who controls the past controls the present and thereby the future. George Orwell's book, 1984, hammers this as the essential feature that allows Big Brother or the Big Brother apparatus to maintain absolute control over fear, perception, and loyalty to the party cause. And yet, despite its popularity, there still remains today a lack of interest in actually informing oneself about the past. I mean, what does it matter anyway? If the past is controlled and rewritten to suit the present? Well, as the Big Brother interrogator O'Brien says to Winston, he said, we, the party, control all records and we control all memories. Then we control the past, do we not? And thus, we are free to rewrite it if we choose. Now, of course, we're not in the same situation as Winston. We're much better off. We, we can study and learn about the past if we so desire. Unfortunately, it's a choice that many people take for granted. And thus, by our failure to ask the right questions and seek the appropriate answers, we find ourselves increasingly in the unsettling position of Winston, Winston Smith. I mean, we're enslaved by the very lack of our own will. In 1984, in Orwell's 1984, there are three main super states in the world. There's Oceania, Eurasia, and East Asia. And they are one in combination or another constantly at war with each other, and they've been so for 25 years. They've been doing this war for 25 years. And, of course, the reason for the war is to keep the people on the verge of starvation, to keep them fighting and working for the war effort because they are promised that everything will change if they just do more for Big Brother. They will love Big Brother. Winston's experience begs the question, if one were born into a fascist totalitarian state, would they know it? Think about that for a moment. If one, if a person was born into a fascist totalitarian state, how would they know it? How would they know if it was totalitarian how would they know if it was fascist? Well, of course, the state itself would not describe itself as fascist or totalitarian. No. How, how could they? I mean, no. They'd say, this is freedom. How would you be able to compare your freedom with the oppression of the enemy when all you're given was that the state, you know, the state's this, the state gives you this, the state gives you that, you will own nothing and be happy. Think about that for a moment. How do you know? that what has come to shape your convictions, your belief, your fears, really belong to you? How do you know that your attitudes and your ideas and all the things weren't placed there by somebody else? You don't. See, we're all very sensitive to this unsettling question because, ironically, it's also been placed in us. Everything is, I mean, think about this. It's what started this whole business of mind control for our protection. Younger people, okay, post-9-11 people, post-9-11 kids, they've been born into an America that is not the same as it was. And so the only people who see America falling into an abyss are people our age, mostly the, the 50, 60, 70-year-old people, right? And what is happening to those old people that know of the past? They're being silent. They're being culled. And why? Because of COVID-19. Those who remember history, I'm going to make a quote that's different from what you usually hear. Remember, you always hear the little phrase, those who, you, who don't remember history are destined to repeat it. How about people who do remember history? They're destined to be erased from the earth. Because what has failed with the Cold War generation can easily be resurrected in future generations by the Great Reset. Everything that we've accumulated over time, we wise old farts, we, we are the ones that are crying out, where's freedom? We're the ones crying out, 
Where's real democracy? We're the ones crying out, this isn't a democracy, it's a republic. And you know what? Those young people out there, they don't give a damn. You know why? Because there have been plenty of teachers to teach them otherwise. You fly the American flag proudly. What are you, a conservative? Are you a nationalist? Are you a a Nazi? That's where that comes from. You and I both know that you're not a Nazi. You and I both know that you're not a white supremacist. You and I both know that nationalism does not always equate to white privilege. But the young people don't know that. Why? Because they've been raised into changing their perception. And the past is being controlled. And therefore, the future is being controlled. When the older generations were celebrating the fall of the Soviet Union, there were still those who did not trust it and still believed that Russian communism and Russian aggression never died. And we can also see that while we may have won the war against Germany in World War II, the Nazis won the hearts and minds of the intelligence operatives, uh, operatives and, and the deep state murderers and the manipulators all following lockstep to their Nazi benefactors or those who are before them. The, uh, this, is the pro- this is the prodigy. This is the, the this is, uh, sorry, progeny. This is the progeny, not prodigy, it's progeny. From the times of Truman until now, we have gradually been able to replace journalists with alphabet agency operatives. Many who are most definitely the descendants of Nazi collaborators that jumped ship in 1943 when they saw that Hitler was losing the war. Then there have been the McCarthy-esque witch hunts and true investigators that have shown that, that there have been communist and Nazi operators still in the very chairs delivering the nightly news. And many are CIA or they're CIA contributors. And they don't hide the fact. They no longer hide it anymore. Despite fluffy rhetoric about protecting Ukraine's democracy, the United States has now turned to distinctly under-democratic methods when it decides to, well, when it decided to back the Ukrainian coup in 2014. And in order to achieve it, what did they do? Well, they used the darkest members of Ukrainian politics, namely neo-Nazis called the Azov Battalion. You say that and people say, oh, that's not true. 